Hello, a great welcome to the series on Abacus. Myself, Jairajan P. This is tutorial number 6 and explains the computation of vertical stresses in a column of soil under an applied concentrated load using Abacus. So let us first read the problem statement. So using Abacus, we need to calculate the vertical stresses in a soil column under an applied concentrated load of P equal to 225 N at depths along the vertical axis z equal to 0.6, 1.2 and 3 meter from the surface. Now theoretically, the increase in the vertical stresses are computed using the Boston's method according to which the increase in the vertical stress at any coordinate x, y, z due to an applied load of p is obtained as delta sigma z equal to 3p by 2 pi into z cubed divided by x square plus y square plus z square raised to pi by 2. Using the above formula, the increase in the vertical stresses at the depths of 0.6 meters, 1.2, and 3 meters were worked out to be 298, 74.5, and 11.9 kilometer per meter square. We shall verify these values using Abacus. Now, to compute the stresses, we shall consider a soil column of radius 2.4 meter and 4.8 meter deep as shown in the figure. Now, to model this soil column we shall make use of the symmetry of this column about the vertical axis and model it in 2D. The soil will be modeled as an elastic material with E equal to 1 into 10 raised to 7 kilometer per meter square, Poisson's ratio of 0.3 and a concentrated load P will be set as 225 kN. So let us start modeling in Abacus. So we shall proceed for creating the part. So let me name it as a soil. So the modeling space will be axis symmetric, the type will be deformable, and the base feature will be selected as a shell. Continue. Now create the rectangle along this uh, vertical axis of uh, the sketcher. Set the width of this rectangle as 2.4 meters. And set the height as 4.8 meters. So the part definition is complete. Done. So now we expect the soil stresses to be very much concentrated near the vertical column, very near to the axis of symmetry. So we shall proceed for creating a partition for this rectangle at a distance of 0.3 meters. So Proceed for creating the partition. Now we shall select the face as the type and the method as a sketch. Now we shall draw a line. And now we'll use the dimension facility to keep this a distance as 0.3 meters. So we'll keep this as this distance as 0.3 meters. So this means that we have uh, defined a partition at a distance of 0.3 meters from the axis of symmetry. So that is complete. So our sketching for the partition is over, done. So now you can see that yes, this rectangle is divided into two parts, one for a width of 0.3 meters very near to the axis of symmetry, where we expect a concentration of the stress and the balance part of 2.1 meter wide. So once this is over, we can proceed for the next module that is uh, defining the property. Proceed for defining the property. We'll call this material as the soil. We shall define the elastic properties of the soil here. E value will be set as 1 into E7, 1 E7 kilonewton per meter square and the Poisson's ratio will be 0.3. We shall use a system of kilonewton and meters all throughout the tutorial. Okay, so now we shall create a section. So let us call this as a, a section soil and it will be solid, homogeneous, continue. And uh, the material will be assigned as a soil and you need not to 
check this uh, title that's a plain stress or strain because it's an axisymmetric problem just leave it like that okay now we shall assign this a section generated to our soil column so assign it so select the regions to be assigned so select this under region okay done and now we shall assign a section name as a section soil with a property of the material being specified from the soil okay that's okay so defining the property through the property module is complete now we shall go for the assembly wherein we need to create an instance of the part so we will create means we have got only one part so create it and ensure that the instance type is selected as dependent okay fine so we have completed the so called assembly module as well now next we can proceed to the step and the step let us start creating the new analysis step for us so let us call it as the step soil step soil and this will be obviously placed after the default initial step created by the backus analysis procedure will be set as the static general continue and we will keep all these parameters default as acceptable to us ensure that we are uh, not interested in a nonlinear uh, behavior so analysis geometry option is kept as off okay so now the next one will be in the step module we shall uh, set the so called field output variables and here uh, we are interested only in the stresses so accordingly we will select only the stresses as our uh, output variables of interest so stresses is selected okay for us okay so having completed the step now we don't have any kind of interaction we are ready to move to the load module and the load module as usual we will apply both the boundary conditions as well as the loads so regarding the boundary conditions we have basically three types of boundary conditions to be imposed one along the axis of symmetry so along the axis of symmetry we know that there cannot be any kind of a translation in the x direction and there cannot be any rotation about the z axis so we will make use of the inbuilt axis symmetric condition boundary condition available in the backus here so what we do is that we will create a boundary condition here and we will call it as bc for the easy identification bc symmetry okay and all this boundary conditions needs to be created in the initial step mechanical and we will choose as a symmetry or anti symmetry okay continue now we have to select the regions for the boundary condition so this is the edge corresponding to the axis of symmetry done and this axis it is normal to the x side so you can identify this as an x axis x side x edge so go to the x symmetry okay wherein we can set the translation in the x direction to be zero and the corresponding rotations to be zero okay so means that one boundary condition we have applied on the axis of symmetry now we can proceed to the right edge in the right edge we will allow only the translation in the y direction so what we can do is we can go to another boundary condition bc for identification call it as bc right and i will create in the initial step mechanical and here i will go for the displacement of rotation continue and uh, i have to select the region this is my region okay done now for this case obviously u1 will set u1 as a zero okay u1 as a zero okay fine now we have one more boundary conditions to be applied on the bottom edge wherein we will assume a pin condition so create a third boundary condition bc i'll call it as bottom bottom okay i'll use the displacement rotation option only and we'll select here we have got two parts because we did the partitioning so we have selected the two parts done and now we can proceed for u1 and u2 as restraint that is as good as pinned okay so now we have defined the boundary conditions for the entire soil column model now we are in a position to apply the loads so go to the loads and here we have got only one load that's a concentrated load so we'll call it as load soil load soil and obviously ensure that this is applied in the new analysis step known as the step soil we'll call it as the mechanical and we have got only a concentrated load to be applied we continue 
Now we have to select the point. So this, this point is on the axis of symmetry. So we can select this point as on the axis of symmetry. Done. Okay. And uh, here we have got uh, say load to be applied in the y direction and it is uh, downward. So minus 25 kilonewton. We are using kilonewton and meters for this tutorial. So, okay. So you can see that yes. We have applied a concentrated load of 225 kilonewton as represented by this arrow. So having completed the load module, now we, we can go directly to the mesh. Now here in the mesh, we have to do the meshing as per our understanding of the problem. We know that the stresses will be concentrated in the central zone and the intensity of the stress will decay in the positive x direction and also in the minus y direction okay so accordingly what we do is that we will use a very close mesh in this area and a little bit you know uh, coarser mesh towards the this zone of this soil so let us start proceeding for meshing so in the meshing we will do all the uh, meshing of the edges using the local seeds so apply the press the local seeds okay we have to go for the object part Okay, go for the seeding. Now we are going to do a simple seeding. That is, for these two edges, we will define, we will divide this into six portions. So let us select the regions first. So I will select this edge, which is of 0.3 meters, and then I will also select this edge. Okay. Now what I will do is that I will divide this into six numbers. Right. Done. So we can say that. Uh, we want this to be by number because I want to divide this into six numbers. I don't want to use any kind of a biasing. That means it will be a uniform division and the sizing control. I want to use it to, to six numbers. Okay. So apply. So yes, it is properly applied. Okay. So we did a local seeding of uh, six numbers for this small portion. Now we are going to do again apply a different local seeding for these two edges. So again, so select the regions. So I want to see this edge. Also, I want to see this edge. Okay. And now I will use the turn button. And here what I will do is that I will use a biasing, a single biasing. And I want to use the, the total number of uh, divisions for this part as 50 numbers. 50 numbers. And I will choose a bias ratio for 4. Bias ratio for 4. Okay. So apply. Okay, so let us see whether it is being properly applied. Yes, you can see that. Yes, the spacing of this uh, seeds it increases towards the right. So it, this means that we want a more concentration here. So this is okay for us. So you can say that you can select it. At the same time, also see the bottom portion as well. So that should also be proper. Okay, we are finding that the, that is in the right direction. So means. Uh, we can say that it is acceptable to us. Okay. So we did the seeding for two parts. That means uh, one, one a smaller segment in the central portion and uh, for the other for the balance width. Now we shall proceed for uh, seeding the vertical edges. We shall uh, go for again the local seeds only. So, so let us select the vertical edges. So Select this edge, select also this edge, select this edge as well. Okay, fine. And done. Okay, fine. So now uh, what we want is we want to do a biasing here. Obviously, we want a core, a fine seed near the top surface and a core seed toward the bottom. So we'll go for a single biasing by the number. And here what we'll do is that we'll choose in the depth direction as a total of 42 divisions. Okay, and bias ratio will be kept as 4 only. So let us see apply. So now let us see that whether it is applied in the proper direction. It seems that it's not applied in the proper direction. Yes. So what we can do is that we can do the just the flipping. So we can do the flipping as. So apply. Okay. So we are not uh, satisfied with this. So let us uh, select the uh, adjust which are to be flipped. This is done. Okay. So let us apply it again. Okay. So now as you can see that, yes, this is acceptable to us. Okay. So, okay. Press okay here.
and this means that our uh, seeding is completed for all the horizontal and vertical edges. Now we can proceed for uh, selecting the mesh control. So select this. So let us select the regions first. Okay, we have selected this region. Done. And we'll go for uh, here uh, the structured one. Okay, structured one. And let us have the quad one. Okay, and uh, okay. Now we shall proceed for uh, selecting what we call as element types. Okay, assign the element types. So let us start creating the elements. Okay, and here we'll select it as a basically standard axisymmetric stress and the linear. So this is okay. Now we can proceed for uh, generating the meshes. So this is okay. Yes. So we have created our meshes. As you can see that the concentration of the mesh, okay, it is uh, larger towards the axis of symmetry and is coarser away from the axis of symmetry. So this means that uh, our uh, uh, meshing is also over. We can uh, straight away proceed for creating the job and we will create the job and let us call this a job as a soil, job soil and uh, continue. Okay, and we shall keep all the default options as acceptable to us. Now submit the job. Okay, and now we can monitor the results. So you can find that okay, the analysis is running on, and uh, whatever uh, if the warnings that we observed are very critical, we have to take care of that. And once the analysis is complete, we can proceed for uh, yes, it is now complete. Now we are in a position to directly go to the results. So go directly to the results. Now we are interested in obtaining the variation of the vertical stresses identified by S22 along the vertical axis of symmetry and generate the corresponding XY data so that we can generate a variation of the vertical stresses along the axis of symmetry and compare it with its theoretical formulation values. So in order to do that, first of all, we need to create the path along which this XY data is to be generated. So we'll create this. And we will choose it as, for example, for easy identification, the path soil and the node list continue. And then what we do is that we will choose the add before option. And now it asks the, what are the nodes to be selected for this path. So select the nodes. So we will call this as the first node and then the end node as this one. Yes, done. So it means that we have selected the required nodes for the path. Okay, and the path is already defined as path soil. Now we are in a position to generate the XY data button. Okay, and we are going to use the source as my path. Continue. Select the, select the path as the path soil. Obviously, we have got only one. And select, we will select this model shape as undeformed. And then we want to have the X value as my Y distance. That is the distance along my Y axis. That is, it starts from this point to this point, Y distance, and uh, the other field output variable will be obviously my S22. Okay, so first plot it and see whether it is okay for you. Yes, so this is the plot or how the stresses, vertical stresses change along the depth. So this is the depth from uh, the top, and you can see that there is a larger concentration of the stresses near the top and it decays exponentially in the downward direction. Okay, fine. So now let us extract this data. So for that, what we do is that we save it as XY data, then we call it as XY data soil. Soil, okay. So as you can see that on the model tree, yes, the XY data soil is already generated. Now in order to see this data, so you can just edit it, edit. So you can see that look here. So this X, X coordinate, that is the distance from the top Obviously, it has to vary from 0 to 4.8. So the beginning value is 0 and the end value is 4.8. That is the depth along the axis of symmetry. And these are the various stresses, okay, the vertical stresses. Okay. So now what we can do is that we can just select these values okay, and copy them to the Excel. Okay. Just use the Control C, copy it, and then paste it in the Excel. So I have copied all these values to my Excel. So you can see that, yes, these are the abacus generated stress values. So this is the distance along my axis of symmetry. These are the stresses. And on this side, you can see that these are the theoretical, theoretical vertical stresses 
for uh, the various steps along the axis of symmetry, I have plotted the both the abacus truss values as well as the theoretical values on the same plot. And you can see that the Boltzmann's values, stress values, which are indicated by the blue color, it's almost the same as that is indicated by the red color, that is by the abacus values. And we can see that both values matches very closely, which means that the abacus calculated stress values have a very good a strong correlation with the those calculated by the Boltzmann's. So that is all for uh, this uh, tutorial. So we'll come up with uh, some interesting tutorials in the next session. Till then, bye.